Hello guys, my name is Wangkwa Uchechuku and you're welcome to my CV211 tutorial. So um, in, in the course of this series, we're going to be going through CV211 and solving every difficult problem, making CV211 very easy. So let's start with this question from 2018-2019 session examination. So this is a simply supported beam. Right, this is a simply supported beam, and the question is compute the reactions AV, BV, and NH for the simply supported beam shown above. Hence, draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams of the beam. So, um, I'll welcome all of you as you guys join me on this ride. All right, so um, we're going to start with the, the very first thing you should do when you have a problem on beam analysis is to draw the free body diagram, and that's what we're going to do right now. So um, this is the free body diagram. So right here we have a free body diagram and now the free body diagram basically represents um, the original diagram in the question but in a more engineering manner, right? Represents in a more engineering manner and I'll explain everything we have here. So this is the, a uniformly distributed load, right? UDL. Now this is a point load at this point and this is another point load, right? Now this is the reaction from our uh, Ruler support. Now the ruler support has only one reaction, which is vertically, and this is the reaction from a uh, pin support. It has two reactions, so it has a vertical reaction and a horizontal reaction. That is why we have two forces acting here, and these are the dimensions. What we'll do now is to check the degree of determinacy of the beam. Now there's something called degree of indeterminacy. It's D O I S T. And the formula is 3M plus R minus bracket H plus 3J. So take note of this formula. This is the formula you, you use to determine if <coughs> this beam is analyzable by simple force equations or not and let's let's go ahead and check it let's go ahead and check it it is expected that this is going to give you zero as your answer but before before we do that i just want to explain each and every parameter here right now m is the number of members in this beam and this is just one Right? It's just one beam, so it's one member. Now, R is the number of reactions from the supports. Now, we have this vertical reaction here, this horizontal reaction here, and this vertical reaction here. That is three reactions. And H is the number of hinges. So as you can see, there's no hinge on the beam. And finally, J is the number of joints, right? Now, we don't know what the joint is. So there's a joint here. And there's also a joint here, which is two joints. So let's go ahead and check the degree of indeterminacy. So we have three, let's bracket, one plus three reactions minus H is zero, and we have three times two joints, right? And this is going to give us 
6 minus 0 plus just 6. That's 0, right? So this means that our beam can be resolved using the normal force equations. Next would um, next would do the resolving of forces. Next would do the resolving of forces. So resolving of forces. Yeah, I, I want to believe most of us already know from our secondary schools. You know the principles of you know upward forces is equal to downward forces and clockwise moments. Is equal to anti-clockwise moments. We are going to be doing basically the same thing here to resolve these forces. So um, <clears throat> I'll start with the horizontal forces, right? Now the summation of forces horizontally should be equal to zero. That means forces acting from the left and forces acting from the right must be equal to zero. So from our free body diagram, we have AH, right, acting horizontally but there is no other force acting horizontally right there's no other force acting horizontally so we have what ah is equal to what zero so i i chose to start with ah because this is the simplest of all to calculate and <clears throat> then we can go ahead to calculate the others so now we also know that sum of the vertical forces must be equal to zero as well. Some of the vertical forces must be equal to zero, which means basically upward forces must be equal to what? Downward forces. Now, let's, let's start with the upward forces. Now, we have two upward forces here, AV and what? BV. AV plus BV. And this has to be equal to all of the downward forces. Now we have, um, this is a uniformly distributed load. So you have to multiply it by what the distance it, it covers, which is going to be 15 times 6. 15, 6. Plus another downward force, 15. Plus the last downward force, which is 45. Now we have that this AV plus BV is going to be equal to the result of this, which is 150 kilonewtons. All right, um, we already have this equation, A, V plus B, V equals 150 kilonewtons, but this equation is not enough to get the values of A, V and B, V. So we need an additional equation, and that is where we <coughs> get the moment equilibrium equation, which is the summation of moments about any point is equal to zero. Now, um, <clears throat> this is a little bit tricky, so but I'm going to make it clear for everyone that might find it difficult. So, um, when you say moments about a point, right, the definition of moment is force times distance, right? and force and distance perpendicular to that force now if a force is acting this way now let's let's uh, let's take this force as an instance right i want to find the moment of this force right about this point i'm just taking an assumption about this point it's going to be the value of this force times the distance from the force to the point we are we are checking at if it's this force we are checking for, it's going to be the value of this force times the distance covered and um, the distance from the force to our point of reference. But then, when you look at a uniformly distributed load, right? It's it's kind of multiple forces acting along a length. And let me describe how this works. So when you when you have a uniformly distributed load like this, this is UDL. Now, you have to have the value of 15 kilonewtons per meter. Now, what this means is for every meter covered, 
a force of 15 kilonewtons is acting for every meter. So it is like 15 kilonewtons, like it's multiple 15 kilonewton forces acting at every meter. Now, for us to be able to compute the moments caused by this uniformly distributed load, picture it this way. Try to convert this into a single force, right? It means you try to convert this into a single force. And how do you do that? Assuming this is acting as a single force, where would it act? Where would it act? Right? Where would it act? Now, <clears throat> it's going to act at the centroid. Now, the centroid is, sim is simply, for the rectangle, the centroid is simply the middle, the center of that rectangle. I don't know if um, it's clear. So, if a group of forces acting in this um, over this length, yes, this length is um, six meters, right? Six meters. Now, I have a group of forces acting over six meters. Now, if we want to convert it to a single force, where would that single force be acting? It would be acting at the center, which is the centroid. So it's acting where three meters from this point. So with this understanding, let's get back to um, our question and solve for the moment. Now, when you're solving for the moment, you take each each force and treat it like the other forces didn't exist, right? You take each force and treat it independent of the other forces. Now, let me explain this statement. Let me just further explain the statement. The summation of moments is equal to zero. It's the same thing you know as what? Clockwise moment is equal to what? Anti-clockwise moment. Now, take this for instance. How this marker, if this marker moves in a clockwise direction, it means it's moving like this, right? And in an anti-clockwise direction, it means it's moving this way. You understand? So now, what you, what you do here, you check the forces that are, that are causing this marker or this beam rather to move in a clockwise direction hmm? independent of any other force now let's take this force acting this way now it's, it's, it's pushing it down this way meaning it's acting what clockwise this force is also pushing it down this way meaning it's acting what clockwise this force is pushing it down this way meaning it's also acting what clockwise but if you look at this force it's pushing it up in this direction right meaning it's acting what anti-clockwise and then this force that is acting at the point it doesn't have any effect but because it's, it's acting at the point of reference so it's not pushing it's not pushing it clockwise or anti-clockwise so we have our um, clockwise forces this this and this and then this is the only anti-clockwise force so um <clears throat> Let's compute the moment. So we have that we we, are, we need to form an equation from the fact that the clockwise some of the clockwise moments will be equal to the sum of the what anti-clockwise moments. So let's start with the clockwise moments. Like we said, for a UDL, the the effect of this force is going to be what fifteen times the distance covered by the force. Right? It's fifteen kilo. If you go back here, it's fifteen kilonewtons per meters, and it covers. A span of six meters. So over six meters, we're going to have fifteen times six. Now, so the effect of this force is fifteen times six. Fifteen times six, right? So it's going to give us um, ninety kilonewtons. Now that ninety kilonewtons is acting where? At the middle of this span. If we are converting it to a point where it's acting at the middle of this span, so this means that. <coughs> When we are calculating for the moment, we are calculating the distance from the middle of this span towards our point of reference, right? So let's take our let's take A as our point of reference, taking moments about A, right? So we start with the clockwise forces, or rather the clockwise moments. We have fifteen times 6, right, which is the effect of the force, and then multiply it by the distance that is acting from <clears throat> the, from the distance is acting from the, from the point of reference, 
which is what? 6 divided by 2. 6 divided by 2, meaning that's the middle of this force. Plus, the next plus clockwise moment we have is 15 kilonewtons. So, times the distance from the point of reference, which is 9. And then the last clockwise moment we have is 45 kilonewtons times distance from this point, which is 13. Now, this is going to be equal to the only anti-clockwise moment you have, which is the BV times what? The distance from the point of reference, which is 13 meters. So, we have BV times 13. Now, um, solving this, solving this, if you have your calculator, you can check it. You're going to have 990 is equal to 13 BV, right? Now, that means we have, um, dividing both sides by 13, you have BV, right, is equal to 990 all over 13, which is going to give us 76.15. Kilonewtons. Now we recall this equation. Recall um, AV plus BV is equal to 150 kilonewtons. So we have that um, <coughs> AV is equal to 150 minus BV, which is equal to 150 minus 76.15 and that is going to give us 73.85 kilonewtons. So now we've um, solved the first part of the question. We have our AH, uh, AV and we have our BV. and our BV, right? So we have AH as 0, AV as 73.85 kilonewtons and BV as 76.15 kilonewtons. So the next step right now is to get our shear force and bending moment equations. So to, in order to do that, we'd have to take it section by section. Take section AC, get the equation for section AC. Take section CD, get the equation for section CD. I take section DB, get the equation for section DB. So um, let's start from section AC. So we have section AC. So for clarity, I'm going to repeat the diagram. Um, We've gotten the shear force equations. We'll find out, we'll just add the boundary conditions that's the conditions at A and at C to get the actual values. So, um, let's see this section AC, right? Section AC, this is between 0 and 6. This is where it ends. 6. So, um, the boundary conditions now we have VA. Right? That means at where this I put in brackets where x is equal to zero. Now this is gonna be equal to let me just put it as a subscript so that it doesn't confuse you. So VA in bracket I put x equals zero. Now <coughs> from we have Vx is equal to seven seventy three point eight five minus fifteen x. So we have seventy three point eight five minus fifteen bracket zero which is going to give us what? 73.85 kilonewtons. Now we check VC, that means as where X equals to six. We have 
0.85 minus 15 bracket 6 and this is going to give us um, minus 16.15 kilo newtons now for the moments the bending moments we have ma that means at x equals to zero so our bending moment equation is is this so we have 73.85 bracket zero minus 15 bracket zero squared all over two and this is going to give us what zero and we have mc that means at x equals to six we're going to have 73.85 bracket 6 minus 15 bracket 6 squared all over 2. Punching this on your calculator, you should get um, 173.1 kilonewton meter. What we want to do now is we're starting with section AC, right? So we want to take we want to get the the equation that's going to be used to find the moment about any random point within AC. So the first thing we'll do is to choose a random point. Now, for um, <clears throat> to make your solving clearer and easier. It's always I always advise that you choose a point closer to the end of the section, something like this, right? Choosing this point, something like this. So we call we don't know the length, we don't know the distance of this point. So let's call it x, right? So from here to here, we call it what? X, right? Now. Um, <coughs> Let's go ahead and get the shear force and the. Let's start with the shear force equation. So basically, the shear force equation is just the resultant of all the forces from the beginning of the beam to this arbitrary point that we choose here, right? <coughs> so um, from the normal convention is we take upward upward forces as positive and then downward forces as negative so let's start i'll call it vx right vx meaning the shear force at x now is equal to so we start from the beginning of the beam and start checking all the forces now the first force we have here is av acting upwards so we have av we have this udl now Pay attention to this. Now we are checking from the beginning of the beam up to this point, right? Where our X stops. So we are going to consider the UDL just from here to here, right? And um, remember what I said about UDLs? That's uniformly, uh, uniformly distributed load. It's, this is the load per meter, right? So you just multiply this load by the what? distance covered by the load in order to get the effect of the load right now let's assume you are converting it to a point load you multiply 15 by this distance which is x that is the effect of the load and it is acting um, downwards so it's going to be negative so we have av minus 15 bracket x right so i think that is all for all the forces that happen to occur before these arbitrary points that we've chosen. So we already know that our AV is what? 73.85 kilonewtons. So we have 73.85 minus 15x. So this is the shear force equation for the section AC, right? Now let's get the bending moment equation. Let's get the bending moment equation for <coughs> For that same section so it's basically 
it's basically the same the same ideology you start from the beginning of the beam and calculate up to the arbitrary points that we've chosen right so i already explained how we calculate um, moments so let's just go ahead and calculate so we have av times the perpendicular distance from the point of reference which is this point x here so it's the, the moment is going to be av times what x right minus this force, the effect of this force, right, times the distance from the um, reference point. So the effect of this force, like we said, is 15, 15 times the distance, right, 15 times x. Now, what's, what is the, where is the force acting? The force is acting at the middle, from what I explained earlier, the force is acting at the middle, which is going to be what? x divided by 2. So we are going to have... 15 times x times the distance from where the force is acting to the point of reference, which is what? x over 2. This implies that our bending moments equation becomes... AV is already known, 73.85, 73.85x minus 15x squared all over 2. Alright, um, so let's go to the next section, which is section CD, right? So we'll do something similar. We choose an arbitrary point. Like I said, it's always nice to choose a point that is close to D. It gives you a better illustration. Um, <clears throat> so, we we'll assume that this is a distance of what? X. Right? This, this has a distance of X. So, like I said, starting with the shear force, let's get the shear force equation. The shear force is the, the we are trying to find the shear force at this point. Um, it's like I said, it's basically the sum of all the forces in the beam before you get to this point, right? That's from the beginning of the beam to this point. So let's start from the beginning. We have what AV acting upwards. Remember, we said upward forces are um, positive, while downward forces are negative. Now here. The the full um, the full UDL is acting here. So like it's this if if this are uh, if this uh, point was somewhere in between, we we'll count we we'll calculate the UDL just within that span. But as we can see, the complete UDL is within the span, so we can just calculate completely for it. So this force here right now is what's going to be fifteen kilonewtons per meter times the distance it covers which is what six six meters so we have 15 times six now we also have i think that is all there's no other force acting on this beam between before you get to this point that we've chosen so all it means is we'll resolve this Remember, our uh, AV is 73.85 and 15 times 6 is 90. And this is going to give us minus 16.15 kilo newtons. So for this section, for this section CD, right, our uh, shear force is what? Is a constant. Now let's get to the Bending moment. So similar, something similar that to what something similar to what we did before. Is, is the sum of all the moments from the beginning of the beam to our point of of reference. So we start from here. We have what the moment um, generated by this force is what A V times X. This distance from the point of reference. We have A V X. 
Now, the moment caused by this UDL, like I said, we try to make it a point load. So the, the effect of the UDL is 15 times what? 6, right? And then it's acting at the center, which is at this point. Right? Let's assume, um, and not really assuming, but this is where it's acting at the center. Right? So now, <clears throat> what we, are, it's, we want to find distance from this center up to this our point of reference. Right? We know that this full distance is x, and this short distance is what? 3 meters. Right, from here to here is 3 meters right so we know that the distance from here to our point of reference is going to be x minus 3 right so we have minus 15 times 6 times x minus 3 now aside this there is no other force that is um, causing a moment before this point so this is our bending moment equation. So we simplify this. We already know EV, which is 73.85 times X minus, this is 90 bracket X minus 3. So with that understanding, we, we simplify Okay, we, we, we get the boundary conditions, rather. So, section CD is from 6 to 9, right? 6 to 9, because 6 plus 3 is 9. At this point, we have 9. So, <clears throat> we get the shear force at C, VC. At this point, X is equal to what? 6. We have that um, this is a, is a constant, right? We got that it's a constant. Minus 16.15 kilonewtons. That means the shear force at D is going to be the same value. Minus 16.15 kilonewtons. So let's go to the bending moment. The bending moment at C, that is where X is equal to 6, is going to be, we have 73.85X minus 90 brackets X minus 3. So we have 73.85 times 6 minus 90 into 6 minus 3 so once you once you solve this you should be getting 173.1 kilonewton meter you can check with your calculator and the moment at d that is where x is equal to 9. Where x is equal to 9, yeah. So we have 73.85 into brackets 9 minus 90 into brackets 9 minus 3. This gives us 124.65 kilonewton meter. You can also cross check with your calculator now there's something important to note it's always it will help you know if you're on the right track now the, the value you got for um the moment at c when you were checking section ac right must be equal to the value you get as with as your moment at c when you're checking for section cd so if you notice when we calculated mc for section ac this is exact exact value that we got so it's a good way to check if you're actually on track so these are all the values for section cd so let's move on to set the final section which is section db so um we're almost there we are in the final section so, as usual, we choose an arbitrary point. Choose an arbitrary. Sorry, let me let's let's make this straight. Choose an arbitrary point, right? And then we have that um, the beginning of the beam to this point is at the distance of x. So the first thing we start with is the 
shear force equation. So, as usual, it's the sum of the forces acting on the beam from the beginning of the beam up to that point. So, we have AV minus this force, which is um, 15 and 6 minus this force, which is what? 15. This is equal to, um, uh, we know AV as 73.85 minus 90 minus 15. This should be giving us minus 31.15 kilonewtons. Sorry, minus 31.15 kilonewtons. So this is also a constant. Right, so both at the beginning of the section and at the end of the section, you're going to have the same value. Now, for the moment bending moment equation, we do something similar. So we have AV, right, times the distance from a point of reference to AV, which is x. So we have AV times x minus the effect of this force is what 15 times. 6, right? 15 times 6 times the distance. So like we said, it's acting in the, mid, in, in the middle here. So half, half of this, this is where it's acting. So this distance is what? 3 meters, right? So to know the distance from this point where it's acting to our point of reference, how do we do it? This is x. And this is 3 meters, right? So we just subtract 3 from x, which is what's x minus 3. Right? And then the final force causing the moment here is this force, 15 kilonewtons, right? And 15 kilonewtons times um, the distance from the force to our point of reference, which is this distance, which is this distance here. Now, how do we get this distance? We know that from here, so this point is what nine meters that's six plus three and from the from this point as well to where this force is acting is what x so this little space from here to here is going to be what x minus nine so we have minus 15 into what x minus nine right let me write it better we have dv as what 73.85 x minus 90 into bracket x minus 3 minus 15 into bracket x minus 9. So this is your bending moment equation for the section db. So we have, let's write them out. This is from 9 to 13. So start with vx. Okay, so we have um, a vd where x is equal to 9 the shear force is what minus 31.15 kilonewtons and the shear force at x equals to 13 is still the same minus 31.15 kilonewtons now let's go to the moment so this should be d let's go to the moment md as, as x equals to 9 we have Let's substitute into this formula 73.85 brackets 9 minus 90 into brackets 9 minus 3 minus 15 into brackets 9 minus 9, which is 0. So if you punch this on your calculator, you're going to get 124.65 kilonewton meter. I'd love you to punch it and check and confirm and MB that's where X is equal to 13 we have something similar 73.85 bracket 13 minus 90 into bracket 13 minus 3 minus 15 into bracket 13 minus 9 so, if you point this on your calculator as well, it should give you a value of zero. Alright, um, so we've got 
we've had almost all the work done. We have um, the values from the shear force and bending moment equations. <coughs> but then one of the very um, one of the most important things in um, beam analysis is what the diagrams, the shear force and the bending moments diagram. So that is what we are heading into now. So it's it's like plotting a graph, but then um, it's more like a graph without scale and it's more like a sketch. So you have your axis. That is you just have needs to have the x axis, that's what's important. Which starts from zero. Right? So this is the shear force um, diagram I'm drawing here. So um, we start with the section A C. So I sorry I didn't develop this. A B C D. Right? A B C D. So we start with the section A C, right? So at the beginning, at the beginning, um, we have 73.85. So I just mark this point for the 73.85. And at the end, we have what? Uh, minus 16.15. So that's going to be somewhere here. Right? Minus 16.15. So for <coughs> section CD, we have minus 16.15, which coincides with this. And we have another minus 16.15 at D, which is somewhere here. I call it minus 16.15. And then um, the final section, um, DB, we have minus 31.15. So that is somewhere here at D, right? Minus 31.15. And at the end as well, we have the same minus 31.15. We have minus 31.15. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so let me move this up a bit just for sake of space. So we have minus 31.15, minus 31.15. So I'm going to um, get a, I'm going to get the diagram and explain it. So this is how you have a diagram like this, like this. Sorry, let me this this one I'll be drawn. And like this. So this is the positive side, and this is what negative side so this is let me quickly run us through this diagram <clears throat> now your your shear force diagram always starts in this direction right because this is a this is a support right wherever there are, wherever there's a support it shoots either up or down so from the beginning like we said <clears throat> when you start it starts with what a positive value, right? It starts with a positive value, which is 73.85. So it shoots it up and you start from here. Now, <clears throat> someone will ask, why did I draw a, why are some lines diagonal and why are some like vertical? Now here is it. When you have a UDL, when you have a UDL, a uniformly distributed load, right? It's, it gives you um, a, a straight line equation, right? It has this diagonal movement. Once you have a point load, right, you have this straight line movement, right? Now, let me give you a realistic illustration for this. Now, there's a reaction at this point. Right? There's a reaction at this point, and that is what pushes this shear force up. Now, this is a uniformly distributed load. That means it's suppressing the load. It's suppressing the suppressing the load gradually. So that's why it's it's slanting like this. Yes, this force pushes it down. This the next force pushes it down. So that's why it's slanting like this. Right? Now you come to this point from here to here, there's no force acting. Right? So you just keep moving. Keep moving and then when you come 
to this point now, there's a force of 15 kN pushing it down. And that is why it goes down like this. Now there's no force acting here, so it keeps moving in a straight line. And then this is a combination of two forces. So this force pushes it down, and then our reaction, which is BV, pushes it back up. So at the end of the day, you have a resultant force going back up in this manner. So just have it at the back of your mind that whenever you have a UDL, <coughs> it's always going to be a slanting line like this. And wherever there's no there's no force, it's going to be a um, horizontal line. And whenever a force acts, that's where you have this vertical line pushing it. And then where there's no force, it's still a horizontal line. So you can just um, shape this for clarity. Now let's get to the so this is the shear force. Diagram. Now let's get to the let me draw a line to divide this. Let's get to the bending moments diagram. Now for conventional sake, right? Due to um, um agreed upon conventions, we represent the positive axis for the bending moments diagram on the lower part because it gives you a more um, re realistic or illustrative explanation. Now, when you say bending moment, you are checking the bending of the beam. So, drawing the bending moments downwards, it's it illustrates more what is um, what is being explained. So, I'll start. I'll start at zero axis from here, right? Start at zero axis from here, and um, <coughs> we input our values. So M A for section A C M at A is what zero. That is here. M at C is what one seventy three point one kilonewton meters. This is here. Let's call it. Let's say it's here. And then um, M at okay for section C the M at C is still the same value. M at D is this is D right 124.65 so let's say it's a little bit higher and then for section db m at d is 124.65 and m at b is what zero so this is what we are going to have we're going to have something like this and this is going to slant this is going to slant like this as well so this is the positive right remember that all our moment values are positive so we have 173.1 here and we have 124.65 here so um let me shape this then I, i'll explain it <clears throat> now if you notice if you notice this is a curved line right it's it's curved so, and this is um, a straight line, but you know diagonal. This is also a straight line, but diagonal, right? So it, it, it's, it's, the explanation is similar to this. Whenever you have a UDL, the shear force, right? It's a diagonal line, right? It's a diagonal line, and um, the bending moment is what? The bending moment is a curved line. A curved line like this. Here, where the shear force is a straight line, the bending moment is what a slanting line like this. And here, where the shear force is a straight line, also the bending moment is also a slanting line. So this is this for the bending moment and shear force diagram. So let's let me label it here. Bending moments there. Um, we've come to the end of this particular question, and I want to believe that the session has been very immense and you've gained a lot. And I'm convinced that if you 
encounter a question, a similar question in the exam, you're going to smash it very easily. This is free 24 marks or thereabouts. So <clears throat> I want to encourage you to stay tuned and look out for the next session that I'll be dropping soon. Thank you very much for your audience. I remain Wangwo Uchechiku.